Every day when I get up and I think about what I need to do to be physically independent at the age of 90, that's what inspires me to do what I need to do. What is it going to be for you? It's 2017. We were both semi-retired and just finished a whirlwind trip visiting six countries in six months. We got back, none of our clothes fit. We had bags under our eyes and you can see my bags. I got serious bags. I still got them. <laughs> our energy levels were low and our doctors were somewhat alarmed at what they saw. With only a few months left in our careers, we were worried that this kind of lifestyle wasn't sustainable. Worried? I think we were panic mode. I was worried. We started to look for a roadmap for a healthy retirement and we couldn't find anything online. All we found was that 80% of adults 65 and older have at least one chronic condition and nearly 70% have two or more. That didn't make Super us feel good. Super depressing. Yeah. And further, 36% of men and 41% of women are obese. Wait, 36% of men, that is a lot. It is a lot. It's scary. It is a lot. And I think we were struck <clears throat> by the fact that the largest percentages of people abusing alcohol were over the age of 65. So all of those combined. Yeah, so, so we knew we had to make some changes. And so we began a journey. And we looked at every aspect of our lives and we came up with five areas that we began to focus on. First was our physical wellness and nutrition that we're going to talk about more today. Then there was our mental wellness that was important to us. And then there was the relationships we had with others. Right. And our relationship, the spouse, partner, you and I. And finally, wisdom sharing. Those five pillars really are what Jody and I spend all of our time on in our retirement transformation. And you know, today we're going to share with you what we learned and what we did, and finally, what you can do to make some changes in your physical wellness lifestyle. And the purpose of this, these changes are going to help you and us live longer, but also almost more importantly, to live the rest of our lives healthier. That's, isn't, isn't that what we all want? It is. It is. You know, we didn't want to work for all these years, earn enough money to enjoy life, only to have it cut short by unhealthy habits. Right. You know, we have clients on both sides of the fence, I'll call it, of the physical wellness spectrum. You know, we've got, um, and we've been on both sides of the fence. We, you know, we, we sure started have. off on the wrong side, but we've moved over. But, you know, there's um, uh, Phil. So Phil retired, he showed up, he's a runner, he's a cyclist, he's, a, he's got good nutrition. He showed up and his physical wellness program was really in great shape. Well, you're right, because people show up, you know, at this phase of life in all different stages of wellness. And Phil showed up with the physical wellness part pretty well packed. He did, he did. But on the <laughs> other hand, you know, we had Jim who showed up in this phase of life and came to us. And he hadn't seen a doctor <laughs> or a dentist in over 10 years. He said to me, I said, why haven't you been to your doctor or dentist? And he said, why would you go looking for trouble? And I'm like, seriously? And men are bad at this. Well, I, I, I was going to say, it sounds like we're picking on men, but you know, you women, pick on them. We're, yeah. women enter this phase of life when there's a lot that's been happen to, happening to them over the course of their careers and juggling, but also a lot's happening, you know, as you turn 50 and older. Right. You know, with your hormones, different stages of life, different, you know, weight and, you know, allergies and just all all sorts of things. So women show up at this stage of life in different ways. Yeah, but phases. men just aren't as good about admitting there's something going on and going to the doctor. And frankly, for the last 20 or 30 years, we've all been juggling our careers, our family. Some of us have aging parents. And our health and wellness really took a back seat. I mean, for you and I, it did. And maybe it did for you as well. For those of you who are here for the first time, my name is Jody Rollins. And I'm Mark Rollins. And we started Retirement Transformed in 2017, not only for us, but for all of you and the other 10,000 people turning 65 every single day. You know, we don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather lifestyle, health, relationships, and more. And if you're new here today, please hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when our new videos come out. 
Now, let's jump into this process that you and I develop for ourselves and that we teach others in our online courses. Yeah, this is the same <clears throat> process you would find in our online course, Your Retirement Game Plan, which is an 11-week transformational journey that hits on all five of our pillars. So the first thing that we do with clients is we ask them to reflect. And really what we want to know is, where are you today with your physical wellness? You know, how are you showing up in retirement in this area? We talked about Phil, who really was in, in good shape. And then Jim was a mess, hadn't seen his healthcare providers for 10 years. Again, he said, why would you go look for trouble? You know, when we're working with our clients, we always want to start here at Reflection and start with a review of all your healthcare providers, your general practitioners, your specialists, your cardiologists, your gynecologists, and, and really figure out, have you been there? Yeah. And, you know, Jody and I now have um, added to our team of healthcare providers a naturopath doctor who's great. But guys, you know, we need to go see the proctologist and we need to have a colonoscopy. Uh, well, women again, need to have colonoscopies too. Okay, I'm talking to the guys though. Okay, but I'm just saying, you're like, guys, colonoscopy. Well, women, all right. same. All right, so guys and women, right. you need to get a colonoscopy. Come on. But guys, go. Women are better at going, men aren't. You got to go and get it checked out. And the other thing is... Talk to your doctor about prostate cancer. Okay, I'll give you that one for the guys. Thank you so much. Do you know that one in eight men during their lifetime are going to get diagnosed with it? So you want to figure out what your doctor's, you know, idea is behind that and get your, your test. You know, this part of a proactive health and just getting a baseline of where you are on your overall all health is super important. And after you get all your healthcare visits scheduled, and it's time to then start looking at your habits and routines. Yeah, so habits and routines are, well, good habits and bad habits. You want to look at both, really. So, you know, are you exercising five days a week right now? Are you walking 20 minutes a day? Are you doing any strength training? You know, where are you now with some of the good habits that help you have a, a much better physical wellness life? And, you know, further to that, what about nutrition and what about water? Recently in our mastermind, it came out that every person on the mastermind made it a goal to drink more water because they just weren't doing it. You know, when it comes to bad habits, be honest with yourself as to what they are and what your triggers are. You know, are you a smoker? Do you drink too much? And if you're eating a lot of processed foods, that's going to catch up with you. So once you've done a good job of reflecting and taking a look at your good and bad habits, it's now time to put together a vision for your physical wellness. Now, just like during your career, when you were running your business or running your family, you needed a destination to go towards or a vision. We used to say in our business that always start with the end in mind. And you know, this may be the most important part of building a wellness program. You know, Mark's vision is great. It's short and it's simple, and it's what really gets you moving every day. Yeah, well, when I originally started working on my visions for all five of the pillars, they were long and chunky and cumbersome. My physical wellness vision now is very simple. I will be physically independent at the age of 90. Now, that really works for me because when I get up in the morning and I wonder whether I should work out or not, I'm not doing it because I want to lose three pounds this month. I'm doing it because I want to be physically independent at the age of 90. Now, I'll skip a day or two, but it pushes me to ride my bicycle, to eat right, to exercise, because that's the vision I have for myself at the age of 90. And you know, here's how to build a simple vision for physical wellness. You know, first pick a time horizon, five, 10, 15 years or more. You picked the age of 80. I did. Which is how many years from now? Not many. 15. Yeah. 15 years. So your time horizon is 15, but the first thing is to pick that time right. horizon. Right, and I, I, I push my clients to go out further. Some right. people want to do something in five years. I want to push you to with the end in mind. So um, you described the physical health at that age. For me, it was physically in independent. And as I said before, it was more complicated at first, but now I keep it really simple. Right. Now think about some of what you want to be doing at that age. 
you know, maybe set some goals, you know, or some accomplishments or even some, you know, visualize something like I want to dance at my granddaughter's wedding or I want to ski the Alps at age 80 or maybe I want to be the oldest person to run a marathon in under three hours. But pick your vision, right? You know, and it takes dreaming and imagination. This isn't going to get done overnight. We spend over a week with our clients working on this with the five pillars. So spend some time doing this exercise. You know, so let's put it all together and write it down, you know, and start with something like this. At the age of blank, you know, pick your time frame, right? For me, it was 80. I will be, and describe your physical health. For me, it was physically independent. Which will enable me to... You didn't well, do that part. <laughs> well, I used to do that, but it was really about just being able to get up out of a chair, to not use a walker. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. I still want to be able to drive. I want to be able to, you know, cycle. But I think this part, this sentence, which will enable me to, if, if you're struggling with a vision, fill that part right, out, right? right? I make agree. it clump, clunky, make it long, make it cumbersome, right. because you can always shorten it. Yeah. So some examples that uh, we have, Jody talked about the one at the age of 60, I'll be the oldest person to run a marathon in under three hours. At the age of 80, I'll ski the Alps with my grandchildren. And we have clients that want to do that. Right. In five years time, I'll be able to walk three miles a day every day. That This person really was a little behind the eight ball and this was a, an achievable goal, but it got that person out every day for 20 minutes. Okay, so now you have your vision and what we need now are habits and routines. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. So we want you to pick one habit, anything, something achievable. Now, if you've been sedentary during your career, you certainly want to talk with your doctor, uh, but you got to start with something. Definitely start with something and think, you know, baby steps, walk 20 minutes. You know, leave your front door and head down the street for 10 minutes and turn around and head back. As easy as that. Work it up to 30 minutes or 40 minutes and then maybe an hour. All of those progressions will help. And always keep the vision in mind of what you're trying to do, the reason that you're doing this habit, because that really is what's going to inspire you. Now, you might, like many people, run into obstacles. you got to figure out what they are. You know, if walking is going to be your habit, It would help if you had a pair of sneakers. That might be the best place to start. Or if you're like me and yoga is your thing, maybe you need to find a studio. Or if you want to lose weight, maybe you find a nutritionist. Or if you're having trouble getting started, talk to a friend. Get an accountability partner. Yeah, we we love this idea where you can get somebody to do it with because then you're both benefiting from the exercise. And like you said, you have a built-in accountability partner. Now, look, when we retired... Our original vision was sitting back, taking it easy, and coasting. And Cheeseburger we, in paradise. We tried that for you remember six. That? I do. Jimmy I Buffett's do. long. Yeah, that, that was, was us. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know we tried that, and we, we soon realized it wasn't it wasn't coasting at all. It was declining. Right. And we didn't want that for us. And quite frankly, we don't want that for you. So go through these steps and create a vision. Then use your habits and routines to achieve that vision. Every day when I get up and I think about what I need to do to be physically independent at the age of 90, that's what inspires me to do what I need to do. What is it going to be for you? And listen, if you enjoyed this, please share it with your friends and also subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. And for more retirement lifestyle tips and conversation, click on one of the videos below or go to our channel.